A religious school in Corona has fired four teachers and seven other workers over differences in religious beliefs. The school insists it has the legal right to do that, but some parents are very upset about it. They're actually pulling their kids out of the school. And teachers are not the only ones that are upset by what happened at the Crossroads School. Members of the clergy are weighing in as well. Joining, with us, joining us tonight is the Reverend John Saville of St. John's Episcopal Church, also in Corona, along with his parishioner, Mary Lou Goodman. She was the fired elementary school teacher in Christina's story that we just saw. And then Serena Beeks, Executive Director of the Commission on Schools for the Episcopal Diocese of Los Angeles. We should make it known that we asked the Crossroads School to join this discussion more than once, and they declined our invitation. So, Mary Lou, I'd like to begin with you because you are one of the teachers that was fired. What exactly was said to you? How did this go down? Um, basically, um, we I found out in January in a teacher's meeting that um, some Catholic teachers and anyone who has not been baptized by immersion and didn't attend what they believed was a Bible-believing church um, would not be able to work at, at Crossroads anymore. Our um, contracts wouldn't be renewed. And I learned about it in a teacher's meeting and wasn't sure if it affected me or not. So when I asked, I found out, yes, that it, that it did. Mary Lou, I mean, this is a personal question, but it's also it's about a personal issue. Are you a Christian? Yes, I am a Christian. I attend a Christian church who believes in the Bible. <laughs> so yes, I am a Christian. Did you ask them, did you wrong that would cause you to not want me to be a teacher? Um, I did talk to them at length, and it was never an issue with, with me or any of the other teachers that we weren't teaching um, the curriculum that was provided to us by Crossroads. Um, it, that never was in question. Um, it just was basically where we baptized by immersion and the churches that we attended, they um, were not Bible believing uh, according to Crossroads. All right. Father Saville, uh, the Episcopal Church is certainly at the forefront of religious freedom. Doesn't Crossroads have a right to do what it did? I think, uh, of course, on one level they have a right to do as we all do, but in this case, um, uh, the right uh, hurt people. Um, um, not everything we do that we think is right is, is right. Uh, for me, and I know it sounds like a strong term, this was a religious cleansing because you had uh, teachers there and other staff members who uh, had uh, proclaimed their faith and lived their faith, um, and suddenly they were asked to leave because they uh, essentially weren't Christian. And I'm referring now to the words of the senior pastor himself who said, we want to make sure our staff is 100% Christian. Um, Where does that leave you? I'm not sure. I mean, really, if the, I mean, um, now we're now we're breaking Christianity down into into what a, a sense of, of purity. I think that's that's part. I think this is a case of, of a doctrine that's that's so narrow and focused that it's it's not able to see that the harm it's doing and and judging others by labels. In other words, just Catholic uh, or um, not baptized by immersion, but baptized by pouring. That suddenly then then you're out of the family and. Uh, um, so it's, it's been very, very difficult. It's opened a wound in our community um, among the Christian folks and others as well. Let, let me go to Serena Beeks. Uh, Ms. Beeks, you run the schools or you're the executive director of the schools in the diocese. Don't you want the children taught in Episcopal schools to be taught under the Episcopal doctrine, just as Crossroads wants their children to be taught under their doctrine? Well, the Episcopal Church is not particularly a doctrinal church, and um, the schools, are, our Episcopal schools, are very um, inclusive uh, in their nature. And we feel that it is a disservice to children not to prepare them to live uh, in and understand the world they're going to be um, living and working in. So teachers in Episcopal schools often are of different faiths, not Episcopalian, some not Christian. Um, teachers in Episcopal schools are Hindu or Jewish. We just ask that they understand the mission of Episcopal schools and uh, that they teach their best for our children. Let me go back to uh, let me go back to Mary Lou. Mary Lou Goodman, what what subject did you teach, or were you going to be teaching? Um, I taught a, a third fourth grade combination class, so and all the subjects. On all the subjects. Mm -hmm. Now, if one of the students, one of the things that the that this school said that the uh, the principal said was that. If a student comes to a teacher with a question, we want to make sure that teacher has the right answer. Uh, what would you have done if a student came to you and asked a, maybe a question about something uh, doctrinal or maybe something that's in the news currently, maybe gay marriage, what have you? How would you have answered them? 
Um, if I did not feel comfortable answering the question, I would have referred them to their parents or to um, the pa Pastor Boer, who is the pastor of the church. Um, any question that I did receive from any child in the third and fourth grade, however, I was very comfortable answering. Um, it was, I'm a Christian and I could answer it using my, my background of, of Christianity and um, it never, I, it wasn't in conflict. But if I did come up with something I couldn't, I would have referred them probably to their parents. And very quickly, you didn't work there very long, but you have colleagues who did. And what type of severance or were they given? What type of pension were they given? Yeah, some of the, one of the teachers who was um, let go had been there 22 years, and um, Crossroads does not pay into unemployment, so we were not given unemployment or severance or retirement. So basically, we were not given anything. All right, finally, I want to go uh, give Father Salvo the last word. If you uh, and the pastor at Crossroads uh, were able to get together, have a little fireside chat, what would you say to him? Well, we did have a fireside chat before, and I would love to have another one. Uh, I think. Uh, We've got to get beyond labels. We've got to get beyond situations where we don't get to know each other before we make decisions about who's in and who's out. Uh, as I said before, this has opened a great wound. I, I trust that God can help heal it, but we have to listen to each other and ultimately love each other. Um, they'll know we're Christians by our love, not by the amount of water that was used in our baptism or all the other things that are important to people, but, but the most important thing is, is to love and respect each other. And I think, wasn't it the Apostle Paul who said, isn't the most important thing that Christ has preached? Not the motive, not the small stuff, but just that Christ has preached. And who we have in common, our Father, not mine or yours, but our Father. We have someone in common, and if we start there, uh, great things can happen. All right. Father Salvo, Mary Lagoon, and uh, Serena Beeks, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time to come in, and on a Sunday of all things. All right. We appreciate it.